a slithering mass of vermin in humanoid shape. And you say it can cast magic too? Truly someone on the outer plains was having a horrid day when this creature was spawned. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Monster of the Week, the show where we dig up old creatures from past editions of our favorite tabletop role-playing games and bring them to light for use in your 5th edition campaign. My name is Josiah, also known as Dungeon Dad, and today we're going to be covering a creature that was requested by Seth Williams. I am of course talking about the Larva Mage. This creature comes to us from 4th edition and is definitely up there amongst the ranks of the most disgusting creatures you will find. Essentially the Larva Mage is a humanoid spellcaster that is made up of swarms of worms and maggots manifesting this shape that all kind of share one consciousness. The whole idea with this creature is that when some kind of great evil spellcaster dies, it imbues its consciousness into the worms that then feasted upon its corpse. It's a pretty neat concept, a great way to gross out your players, and I think it can facilitate some very memorable encounters. So as always today, we're going to talk about what this creature can actually do in combat, some ways that we've changed it a little bit to suit our needs, and of course some ways that you can actually use it in your 5th edition game. So let's start things off with... The Larva Mage, like so many other spellcasters, is primarily going to be focused on artillery, so doing damage from a long distance away. Because of that, it's going to want to keep its distance. One trait it has that makes this much easier is the Swarm Body. This works pretty much the same way that many other swarms work in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, but essentially it allows this creature to move through other creatures' squares as if they were all allies. The rationale being, of course, that because it's a swarm of creatures, it can just shift its body in whatever shape it needs to be in to squeeze through certain spaces. This also allows it to squeeze into spaces that normally only a tiny creature could fit through because it can fit through all of the worms that make up its body one at a time. This also gives it resistances to certain types of damage, primarily slashing, bludgeoning, and piercing damage. And due to the fact that this creature is in fact undead, it is also immune to poisons, diseases, and of course, also as a swarm, it can't be grappled. All of that basically illustrating the point that this creature has some survivability outside of magic, and it's got some mobility as well, which is going to help it play keep away. Now, of course, when it comes to attacks, this creature has two kind of standard attacks that it just needs to have so that it always has something to do. It has an ability called Corrupting Touch, that's a melee attack which deals a pretty decent amount of necrotic damage. And it also has a ray attack called Ray of Cold Death. This can shoot up to 120 feet away and does both cold and necrotic damage. These two attacks aren't anything super fancy, but they're just there so that this creature always has something it can do no matter the situation. The first real powerful ability this creature has is called Withering Flame. This is another spell attack that essentially targets a 15 foot area. It doesn't have the same range as the ray attack, this attack can only go 60 feet away, but because of that it does a lot more damage and can target more than one creature, as many as it can fit in that 15 foot area. This is the attack the creature is most likely going to want to use every turn if it can. It causes good fire and necrotic damage and, like I said, it can affect more than one creature. But when it's really been backed into a corner and needs to just stall the party or whoever's trying to attack it, it can use its next ability which is called Horrific Visage. This is an area-based effect that targets all creature within 50 feet of the Larva Mage. Basically what happens here is the Larva Mage shows a vision of something terrible, the creature's greatest fear, in the hopes that it will paralyze them with fear. It does cause a small amount of psychic damage, but that's more for flavor than anything else. But the important thing here is that it forces a wisdom save, and any creature who fails it is paralyzed. The paralysis only lasts for a round, but it's important because this gives the Larva Mage a chance to potentially escape. This ability does of course have a recharge, it recharges on 5 to a 6, so it prevents it from being overused. But in a typical combat with lots of melee fighters, you'll see the Larva Mage bust this out once or twice. Its last major power, and this is the one that's going to cause a fair amount of damage, is called Worm's Feast. This attack only targets one creature that's within 60 feet, and when the Lever Mage uses this attack, it literally summons and spawns worms underneath the surface layer of skin of another creature. This ability is not only disgusting, but it also causes a huge amount of damage and a bit of psychic damage on top of the regular damage as well. This is actually a save based ability, so the target does make a dexterity save to try to get out of the way of the attack ideally avoiding most of the worm spawn, but even if they succeed, they're still going to take half damage, which is still pretty gross. Originally this attack, as it's worded in 4th edition, was just an illusion, which I thought was kind of neat because the whole idea, the way it originally worked, was it would create this illusion of worms underneath someone's skin, 
And if the attack dropped them to zero hit points, it was successful. But if it didn't, then it didn't actually do anything. The target was just like, oh, it was just a trick and then moved on with combat. I thought that them actually summoning worms on the surface layer of another creature's skin was way grosser, way more interesting, and just a better creature design. Otherwise, it's essentially wasting an action to do no damage potentially, which didn't really make sense to me. The only problem here is, if you make them actual worms, do they just disappear after the attack is done, or what? So, I added a bit of text at the end where if they fail the save by 5 or more, then the Larva Mage makes this attack against them the next round again for free. Basically meaning if they really fail hard on their dexterity save, they've just been wormed up a whole bunch. Plus, this makes the Larva Mage a little bit stronger because I felt that as interesting and good as it was, it was kind of a weak creature to be honest. But this final ability, I think, gives it that extra kick it needs. And of course, this is a recharge ability, so it can't just use this every round. Unless, of course, the dice decide so and your players get very unlucky. But speaking of changes I made, let's take a look at some... Now my first thought when it came to modifying this creature was why doesn't it have any kind of psychological ability? And by that I don't mean damage because it does do some psychic damage with a couple of its attacks. What I mean by that is I initially thought of it should have some kind of ability that sickens targets which was a mechanic from 3.5. Sickened is not a condition in 5th edition and I felt like paralysis is too much for just some kind of trait that it would possess. So I ultimately settled on a trait that I called the horror behind the mask. These larva mages often wear carved stone masks to conceal their true identity if they have to go anywhere where there are actually people around, so hence the imagery of the robed figure with the mask on. And with this trait, they can now as a free action take the mask off or just stop holding it to their face with the worms that make up their body so it just kind of falls off. And then all creatures who see the true nature of the larva mage have to make a wisdom check. I set it at a DC 15 which should be passable for most players by this point because this is a CR 14 creature so by the time your players are actually fighting this a DC 15 challenge for almost anything shouldn't be too hard. It's mostly for flavor but it definitely will still get a player here or there. Point being anyone who fails this check is then frightened of the larva mage. I also wanted to make the larva mage a bit more mobile because it does have that nice swarm trait which is a great perk for moving through the battlefield but it's still going to take attacks of opportunity from everyone it tries to move past, and that doesn't really allow it to do anything unique. There's also a lot of things in 5th edition that will allow players to essentially lock down this creature, which is why spellcasting enemies are so much squishier in 5th edition than I've found them to be in the past. That very well could just be my personal experience, but at least that's kind of what I've noticed. So what I did was I gave it a trait called Rapid Escape. This allows the Larva Mage to disengage as a bonus action. However, in order to do this, it must drop all physical possessions it is wearing or holding. The reason for this is it gives it somewhat of a drawback so it's not going to abuse this tactic if it has a rod or scepter or something like that it's using to cast spells. And flavor-wise, the reason that I figured this makes sense is because it's literally ejecting all of the worms, essentially its body, out of its robes and clothing or whatever it has going on so that I can just escape. This is more or less a last ditch attempt at just getting out of the situation it's in if it needs to just not be in the center of a group of melee fighters for example. So that's my take on modifying this creature but there is one other thing I wanted to mention. Where this creature is essentially an undead spellcaster, it's very possible it might have access to a spell book or something like that that it had in life. So if you like this creature and you want to use it, but you think, oh, I wish it could cast Arcane Missile, or I wish it could cast Firebolt, or whatever, you can easily give it magical items or a spellbook that allow it to cast those spells a certain number of times. Just be weary that if you give it level 4 or higher spells and more than one of them, this might be a tougher fight than what's intended by the CR. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but just something to consider if you decide to give your Larva Mage some extra spells. Anyways, that's enough about mechanics, let's move on to some... Any spellcaster who imbues their consciousness into a giant swarm of worms that were previously feasting upon its corpse is very clearly desperate to stay alive. Or to stay unalive. To stay in the mortal world, should I say. As a DM, finding out for yourself why this creature wanted to stay alive so desperately is a good tool to figure out what its motivations might be in your game. You could easily set this creature up as the big bad of your game or the current campaign arc, and maybe the reason that this creature had to stay in the mortal world was because it has some kind of master plan it's trying to unfurl. Or maybe staying in this state was never the creature's intent, and it's actually trying to figure out a way to get its body back. Another fun trick you can do with this creature is if your players kill a powerful spellcaster, whether it's in this campaign or a previous one you've run in the same world, whatever it is, 
if they don't dispose of that body properly and they just bury it somewhere or hurl it over a cliff, maybe that spellcaster comes back as a larva mage. And then it would have a reason to go after the party because it's angry at them for a killing that creature and also dismantling their plans potentially. An interesting way you could actually set that up is maybe the mask that the larva mage is wearing is carved in the shape of the face that used to belong to this creature's old body. So maybe the players catch wind of a rumor that the evil wizard so-and-so has returned and is gathering minions by his side. They probably they think that's impossible, we killed that guy for sure, only to actually confront him and find out that he has in fact become this giant worm abomination. Or if it's a completely separate group of adventurers and this was an evil wizard or something from a past game altogether, maybe they're just set up as a new big bad evil guy at a somewhat higher level for a new group of adventurers. I like stuff like that, just the weird continuity that exists between all of my different D&D games. I know not every DM does that, but if you do, this is a fun way to kind of implement it. They also make a great alternative to the Lich as an evil undead overlord type. They're somewhat lower CR, so you can have a very similarly themed villain, except at level 14 rather than level 20. Another possible plot line too is that the party is actually maybe encountered by a larva mage as an NPC who doesn't necessarily attack them. Maybe the larva mage needs some kind of specific object or the MacGuffin of your choice and he enlists the party to go after it and by retrieving that for him the larva mage can use it to get his body back. And of course in exchange he will give the party something that they need. This could be a great way to move along the plot to a certain campaign arc and also sets that larva mage up who is now returned in human or whatever race he is form as a potential recurring villain later on. Because while he may have acted amicably with the party while he needed something from them, larva mages are by nature just straight up evil. So whatever that guy wanted to do in life now that he has his body back, he's gonna go do it. And if it's something evil, the party might be inclined to stop him. I mean, hell, they might even feel responsible for bringing him back if they facilitated his return in some way. The last thing I wanted to bring up here regarding plot hooks is that there's a connection between the Larva Mage and the god Caius. Or Caius. That sounds too much like Caillou, but I'm not sure how you say that. But I think it's Caius. Caius, or the world that walks, is an ancient evil in the Forgotten Realm setting. And if you're familiar with him, you probably thought of him as soon as you saw the art for this larva mage creature. There's an old adventure path called Age of Worms where Caius was supposed to facilitate this prophecy where he would bring about the end of the world and start an age of undead rule. So if you happen to be playing in that adventure path or you just have Caius as a god in your game, the larva mage makes a great minion of his. I mean, it's essentially the same thing. The only difference being Caius is obviously much more powerful because he's a god and he's huge, he's like 40 feet tall, but he's also a giant creature made up of many worms. So you could play off that and maybe have the Larva Mage as the leader of a cult that's seeking to bring back Caius. Which I know is like the classic trope, the cult trying to bring back the evil god, but it's a trope for a reason, because it actually works and is usually pretty fun. Anyways, that is all I've got on this creature today, so hopefully you enjoyed listening to me talk about this Wrigley Mage. And hopefully some of you found this video useful. If you did and you're not already subscribed to the channel, I please encourage you to do that. I've got at least one new video every week. And if you've got a monster in mind you'd like to see me cover on this show that you love and no one knows about, definitely post a comment down below and I will be happy to check that out. If you've had this creature used on you by a DM in the past or you've used it on a group of players, please tell me about that in the comments below as well. As always, you can find the stat block for this monster in the description below where there's a link to the Google document. And if you are one of my Patreon supporters, or you would like to be, there's a link to the Patreon there as well, where you will find the Monster Manual style stat block for this creature just posted on the page earlier today. And while you're down there, you can check out the Discord channel, the Reddit page, Twitter, all that good stuff. As always, just want to thank you guys so much for watching, I do appreciate it, and I will see you in the next video. Till then.